All right, guys, good afternoon. Um, so we'll take a look at the abolitionist movement as well as women's rights movement. Um, for this, you don't have a worksheet. You have to create notes in your own notebook. Um, we're going to be looking at about um, seven different people, uh, both in the abolitionist and the women's rights movement. Uh, so we'll create yourself a seven-row, two- or three-column uh, chart. You really want to look at the... Um, role of the person in the movement, and what they contributed to the movement. That's really what you want to focus on, but there'll be a link or an example of the worksheet below that you can just fill in as you go. Uh, so draw that in your notebook uh, before we start. So we're going to look at the abolitionist movement first. Uh, this movement to end slavery really started in the late 1700s. There were plenty of people when writing the Constitution that had no desire to have slavery around anymore. So they began to work to get rid of it. Um, and it really didn't start gaining momentum until, uh, you know, 1804 when the North, the Northern states really banned slavery. They were the first ones to do that. 1807, the United States abolishes the slave trade, so you can no longer bring in new slaves. And as we talked about in class the other day about Irish immigrants, and that, you know, they weren't um, as valued as African Americans because you can't bring in anymore because the slave trade's over. So it was really um, important to the abolitionist movement that that happened. So it's a step in the right direction. Um, so the first person we're going to take a look at is a gentleman by the name of William Lloyd Garrison. Hi, William Lloyd Garrison. Uh, William Lloyd Garrison published an abolitionist newspaper in the north up in Boston. Uh, it was called The Liberator. He was, again, a public advocate. Uh, really got the word out there about why slavery was wrong. Um, he was actually got to the point where there were northern mobs that were against him because of his abolitionist beliefs. Because remember, not just um, people in the north were against slavery, there were people that agreed with the slavery movement that just happened to live in the north. So there was an angry mob that was able to take him. They were dragging him down the road. They were about to um, hang him. But thankfully, the mayor of Boston at the time stopped it. Uh, and He wasn't hung. Um, so he really just, his words using, you know, freedom of the press and freedom of speech to talk out against slavery was really his main contribution to this uh, movement. Next, we have a gentleman by the name of Frederick Douglass. Now, don't be freaked out by his hairdo. Uh, it's not like he stuck his finger in an electrical socket or anything. Uh, so that's Frederick Douglass. Okay, Frederick Douglass was a public advocate for abolition. A uh, former slave himself escapes to the north, changes his name to Frederick Douglass, uh, so he wouldn't be recaptured and brought back to the South, which many slaves that ran away from the North were. Uh, he educated himself, uh, became very knowledgeable on the topic of abolition, and was just a public advocate for it. He made a lot of public speeches, spoke to a lot of important people, spoke to President Lincoln about abolition. So really well-known person, really well-spoken person, uh, just all-around great abolitionist. Um, very, very good public advocate. His writings are very instrumental in, uh, you know, getting rid of slavery from his experiences. Just like uh, Frederick Douglass, there's another lady that was a public advocate for um, uh, abolition, and her name was Sojourner Truth. Kind of a fuzzy picture, but that's who Sojourner Truth is. Okay. Uh, Sojourner Truth, again, public advocate, slave herself, escapes, educates herself, and becomes a very big public advocate for abolition. Remember, abolition means getting rid of the institution of slavery. Okay, um, the last person we're going to talk about, I'm sure you're extremely familiar with, um, instrumental in helping slaves escape to the north using something called the Underground Railroad. No, not the subway. The subway is an underground railroad, but that's not what we're talking about, so let's forget about that. We're talking about a string of paths and secret routes north using signal system to move people from the south to the north or to other free parts, you know, because remember, Mexico abolished slavery, so they can go to Mexico very easily. Okay, um, they can head to Spanish territory. Slavery was abolished there. So they had plenty of opportunities using these secret underground, secret above ground uh, path systems to get to wherever they were going. And Harriet Tubman, who we're talking about now, was an extremely important person in this um, event in terms of moving people north. 
Um, she, starting at the age of 13, stood up for African Americans. She was 13. She tried to stop um, her master from beating one of the other slaves that she was working with, and she got struck over the head, and she had a fractured skull. So every person that she moved north, she did that with a fractured skull. So whenever you guys complain about a small injury, she did it with a fractured skull. She helped a lot of people. Okay, so put it into perspective. Um, it was to the point where she was so successful that a lot of people in the South had a $40,000 bounty on her for her capture. So if you captured her and stopped her from removing slaves in the South, you were given $40,000 for stopping her. That's how much of a threat she was to the institution of slavery. And that's why we really, you know, we talk about the you know, Underground Railroad, we talk about the abolition movement, we really talk about Harriet Tubman. Okay, extremely, extremely important uh, role model for the abolitionist movement and for just, you know, uh, motivation. Okay, she was a pretty cool lady. Okay, again, fractured skull, moving, you know, tons of slaves north. Okay, very, very instrumental in that movement. Uh, so we're shifting from the abolitionist movement to the women's rights movement. And those are intertwined. A lot of the people that we talked about, Frederick Douglass, Sojourner Truth, okay, uh, they not only helped out in the abolitionist movement, but helped out in the women's rights movement. They were both advocates because they felt they were, you know, connected. You know, everybody should have equal rights, natural rights, like we talk about in the Constitution. Okay, uh, so the last person we're going to really focus on uh, is Elizabeth Cady Stanton. She was an advocate for women's rights. She spoke out publicly about it, talking about how women should have the right to vote, okay? organized meetings, the Seneca Falls Convention in upstate New York, um, talking about how women should have equal rights. They write their own declaration. They write the Declaration of Women's Rights. Okay? So they take, model it off our Declaration of Independence and create Declaration of Women's Rights. So really, really important. Okay? Public advocates, you know, big speak, uh, speaker on this topic, and again, not only for women's rights, but for abolition as well. Uh, lastly, Susan B. Anthony, another really important person, uh, probably one of the most notable for the women's rights movement is Susan B. Anthony. Uh, she was really the person that pushed forward the right for women to vote. Okay, And eventually the right to vote would come about, but it wouldn't be until the 1900s. Um, but again, she was someone that not only worked for the women's right to vote, but also for getting rid of slavery. And, you know, all these movements are intertwined. It's about women's rights. It's about abolition. It's all about human rights in general. So all these topics we've been talking about in class about, you know, the treatment of immigrants, the treatment of African Americans, the treatment of women. It's all about natural rights, about the Constitution, about gaining those natural rights for everybody. And that's why these two movements, women's and abolition, were both intertwined. Okay, um, so make sure that you have that notes taken on this topic. Tomorrow, we're going to take a look at these movements in general um, of the abolition movement and of the women's rights movement, and we're going to take a, you know, a deeper look at these individual people and really see what they meant to society in general. Uh, please make sure you have those notes taken. You can rewind this as many times as you want. The link will continue to stay up there for the remainder of the chapter. Okay, uh, if you have any questions, please email me. Uh, and I'll see everybody in room 21 tomorrow. Have a good night, guys.